Hi, it's MJ Calloway here. Have you ever thought about writing a book? Or maybe you thought about being part of a book, contributing a chapter to an anthology. Well, if that has ever crossed your mind, or if you have written a book and you want to get some more insight, join us today. I'm here today in the Tiny Bounce Up studio with Kelly Commander, and we will be talking about the book 21. We have been doing a video series 21 days prior to the launch. So welcome, Kelly. So happy to have you back in the Tiny Bounce Up studio again. I am super excited to be here again. Do you believe that we are launching the book tomorrow? I do not, because when we decided to do this video series back in the beginning of February, the launch date, April 21st, seems so far away. It's crazy to think it is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, It feels sometimes like the time has gone really slow, and then other times it flew by. You know, it's one of those things that it's like a pinch me moment where you want to kind of pinch yourself that the time is really here and that this is something that all 21 of us have have done and have we have managed to get this out there and get this it's just it's just incredible i, I really don't even have words for it obviously <laughs> well we'll see if we can pull those out but okay. for viewers uh, if you have been following along with us, you would have met Kelly in the very first episode. Kelly is the project manager. I, I think that's what you're calling yourself for the book or yeah. the curator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, she either has, one is fine. Yes. Kelly has pulled this whole project together. Now imagine pulling together 21 women who are all in the business realm and their chapters. So share Kelly from that perspective what what does that feel like now at the end of it to say oh my goodness like this is what I learned I learned and I'll be perfectly honest that writing a book is not as daunting as what it seems you know when I first came up with the idea back in November of 2020 and I reached out to Corey Wamsley, who I wanted to be my writing coach and the editor for the book. I thought to myself, she's going to think I'm crazy. Like, this is a lot of people, a lot of moving parts, you know, and her just immediate excitement of, okay, we're going to do this. I will coach you through this and I will be your editor. And um, she also accepted to write a chapter in the book too, which was fabulous. Mm -hmm. And once we got into it and we got into the coaching sessions and I realized that it's not as difficult as you think when you have someone to guide you through everything. Like I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about the Amazon process, you know, uploading the different versions, the print version and the digital version and, you know, creating an author page. And there's a lot of things that I didn't know. Actually, I, I really didn't know anything about putting a book together. Um, so that I think is something that everybody needs to know that the process is not as difficult. And you know that because you've written how many books, you know, it's not as difficult as right. what people <clears throat> would think. Um, that was the first thing that I learned. The second thing that I learned was a lot about myself. Um, I learned mm -hmm. to be, yeah, I learned to be more aggressive. I learned to just say no, if something wasn't the way that I thought it should be, or that I wanted it to be. Um, but I have to say that I chose some of the most flexible, understanding, compassionate, incredible women to be in this book. There was never an issue, you know, with anyone mm -hmm. as far as a contributor goes. But if there was something that was brought up that I was like, mm, that's not really the way I want things to go. I really found the strength to just come out and just say no. Whereas maybe a year ago or so, I might have just caved and said, oh, that's what somebody wants. I'm just going to do that. So that's something that's really a big deal for me. So it sounds like you learned how to set more boundaries. Yes, that is a perfect way to say it. Yes. I, it, yeah. And I, you know, I turned things down during this process because I wanted to concentrate on the book. You mm -hmm. know, I had turned down um, working with a client who would have been a great opportunity, but would have needed way too much of my time. And I couldn't afford to give that time to the client and still be able to put as much time into the book, which you know how much time it takes. Um, <laughs> it I think that's one thing that's underestimated. You underestimate the time that it's going to take to put things together. Um, 
But, you know, I learned to just be able to say no and to be okay with it. And I think that women overall have a really hard time saying no to things. Sure. It's a trait to compromise. You know, yeah. that's what women usually do. They find a way to compromise. And sometimes we are too much in the way of people pleaser. And that sounds like that's where you were maybe a year ago compared to the growth you've had with this project. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I mean, I still do want to make people happy. I think that everybody, everybody is a people pleaser in their own way. Yes. You know, but at the same time, I'm okay saying no now. And that's a really strange thing for me. And Right. And also when we say no, would you agree? When we say no, it opens the door for more. It does, because I think that's a way for the person who's saying no to really explain what they want and what they're after and what the results should be of whatever project they're working on. And the person or people that they're saying no to get a better understanding because it's not just throwing ideas at someone and seeing what sticks. It's actually digging in and being able to say, this is what this person is aiming for. This is their goal. This is their overall, you know, what they want to do. So I do think it does open more doors and it does, it does allow for more creativity and more collaboration. Definitely. And that's the one key piece from my end and what I had contributed to this project was the video series, the collaboration. The collaboration was so key in order for everyone to get scheduled and to get <laughs> the, the videos recorded and the editing and all of it, that collaboration. How did you find the collaboration on your end coming from the project manager, the curator piece? It went a lot smoother than I thought. You know, I, I have read things where people say about, you know, herding cats, you know, whenever you have a lot of people involved in a project, it's like herding cats. And I, I don't feel that way at all. We set deadlines mm -hmm. and I stuck to them. And that was part of my boundaries thing and part of my saying no. Now, there were a few instances where people did need some extra time, but I padded that time because I knew that was going to happen. You know, sure. I knew that somebody was going to say, okay, this is due today. I need one more day to finish it. And then I also padded in the time um, with Corey's guidance to have time to read the chapters and then go back to people because there were a few people that I said, give me more, give me more. And I can tell you that Jesse Wagner was one of them. She wrote about her mama mantras and her whole journey with postpartum depression and I knew that she was a really honest and open person. And I don't feel mm -hmm. that she gave enough the first go around. So when I sent it back to her, I said, Jesse, elaborate, give us more, you know, tell us just a deeper story. And she did. And whenever I wrote back to her, I told her, I said, I'm crying right now. I, I'm literally crying because I'm just so mm -hmm. proud of what you're saying and what you're doing and what you're going to do to help other women out there who have struggled with postpartum depression. You turned it into a business. And that is the piece too. You're saying, no, you won't accept this chapter. It opened the door for a deeper chapter and connection from her. Yes. It happened with Brandy Lipford as well. I sent Brandy's back to her and I said, I need more. You have to tell a deeper story. And she did the same thing. She went deeper. She, you know, pulled more thoughts and feelings and all that stuff out. And in the long run, and you can ask both of them to see how they feel about it. But I think that they're glad that I did push them the way that I did because their stories really shine. Everybody's story shines. Absolutely. There is something about a red pencil mark. And that's going back to the days before we had all the digital. But yeah. one of my first editors, whenever she had sent back my manuscript with these red pencil marks everywhere, it was like, oh my goodness. But in the end, it does make it much stronger. Yeah, I agree. At the beginning of this project, you decided not to tackle this on your own. And probably for good reason, you have never written a book before, so you didn't have that guidance. So instead, you had hired a book coach. Mm -hmm. What 
what are your, th- now that you've worked with a book coach, what are your thoughts? Would you do that all over again? I would never take on another writing project without having a writing coach and an editor. I knew nothing about formatting a book. I knew nothing about, you know, I thought I knew how to edit. I thought I knew a lot of grammar and punctuation and things like that until Corey and her team um, and the editor that worked on this book, his name is Jim. So he got in there and the first copy that came back to me, I almost had a heart attack. There, you talk about the red pen. There were so many changes and so many edits and we had made it really clear to all of the contributing authors that the editors were not going to change what the meaning was and what they were saying. It was going to change things to make it grammatically correct, to make things clearer. So I had to really take that into consideration after I read through that first round that Jim sent back to me because I really needed to make sure that we weren't changing what the women were saying and we were not taking out the feeling. And if someone who cannot hire a coach to help them, what would you suggest they do? Because not everyone is in the position to do that. I would suggest just doing a lot of research. I'm sure Amazon, and they do, they have guidelines on their website. You know, Mm -hmm. follow along, do this, do this. These are your next steps. To me, I'm a tell me how to do it and I'll do it kind of person instead of reading instructions. So to be talked through it, was a heck of a lot easier to me than to go onto Amazon and figure it all out myself. But I think that sure. you can, yeah, you can do it yourself. You can go onto Amazon and go through the process there and, and get the book uploaded. I'm assuming they can walk you through all that. And there's probably somebody in their back office that can format. I'm sure you'd have to pay for it, but I'm sure they can format it and make everything look pretty and make sure the margins are right and, you know, the spacing and the whole nine yards. Right. Um, for And here's a tip for our viewers who might not be able to afford a coach because they do want to touch on that, even though there are coaches around, is to find someone who has been through that process and tap into their knowledge because mm-hmm. they can also give you some tips on what they were able to do. Definitely. And honestly, MJ, I'd be willing to give some pointers to anybody who reached out to me. If they're thinking about doing this, I would be more than willing to spend, you know, 20, 30 minutes talking somebody through what I did more in depth because we don't have time for that here. I don't want to take the whole interview off doing that, but I would be more than happy to speak to people. They could always reach out to me and I'll I'll be as helpful as I can. That is very generous. And Kelly, so taking that generous offer. Can you go ahead and give us how can someone con- someone who really does want to tap mm-hmm. into your knowledge, how can they get a hold of you? Sure. They can shoot me an email. It's Kelly, K-E-L-L-I at K2CreativeLLC.com. And it's that simple. Just shoot me an email and just say, I'm thinking about writing a book and I can just take it from there and we can do a quick phone call, Zoom call, whatever, and just talk through it. That'd be great. So now that we're at the end of the project, where do you see your next project? Do you see this being a launch to your own book or a launch to, you know, maybe a transition into something else? I do see it being a launch to my own book. And that was sort of the plan from the beginning. Um, When I had sat down with Renee Farrow and was going through her coaching program with her, And we talked about me writing a book, whether it was a business book, a fiction, no matter what I was going to write, I kept saying I would do it within five or 10 years. And she was the push Mm -hmm. that said, why? Why not now? If you're going to do it, why not just do it now? Is the launch to me writing another book on my own. This was like my baby step. Write the intro, write my chapter, write the conclusion. Okay, this was three little pieces of a big puzzle now that I have the experience and I have the people behind me that I know will help me, I really do feel comfortable that within the next year, I will put out my own book of some sort. I have ideas. I'm not really sure exactly what I want to do. Um, but I think with guidance from folks like you, Renee, Corey, I think I can figure it out pretty quick. And for our viewers, Kelly's talking about Renee. Renee is also in the book. What I loved about her interview is she believes in planning now for your future, setting yourself up now for your future, whatever that future 
you plan it to be. And her motto is just do it. Yeah. And she lives by just, that. Trust me. It's just, if I had a dime for every time that woman said, just do it, whether it was verbally in a text message, in an email, that's just, that's just who she is. And she's very inspiring. And I think that a lot of the women can learn a lot from her, a lot of the women in the book and a lot of the women who read the book. And, you know, while I'm on that topic, I'm going to spin off a little bit, MJ, and I'm going to talk about you. Um, the knowledge and the expertise that you brought to this project and the time, I'm going to get choked up. Oh, the don't, time, because I don't, <laughs> I don't want to get emotional during an interview. <laughs> no, but we might. Um, the time that you invested in this project and that you invested in all of us is just remarkable. I can't even begin to thank you for, I mean, you did 21 interviews. You know, you set them up, you spent at least an hour with each of us doing this. The editing time that you took to edit them, then all the posting time to add them to social media <laughs> channels and to post them. And nobody, nobody asked you to do this. You volunteered and you used your own time while running a business, spending time with your grandchildren, you know, traveling, you know, locally. So I, I really want to thank you. And I don't know how to thank you besides just verbally coming out and saying, thank you, MJ, because I just feel that so many people have learned so much from you because a lot of the women don't have, I know, I'm sorry. A lot of the women don't have the interviewing skills and they've not been in front of a camera and they're uncomfortable talking about themselves. And I can't tell you how many people messaged me after their interview and said, this was so much easier than I thought. I felt like I knew MJ forever. MJ made me feel so comfortable because you know darn well, there's only a handful of us that you knew prior to this project. Right, two. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I thought it might've been more than that. I thought, so it was just me and Renee. I thought there was more people that you knew. Yeah. Right, no, um, I'm, right, not personally, no. Yeah. So, um, you know, I really think that people need to also reach out to you for that, to talk to you about how do I make an interview? How do I do my lighting? How do I sound good? How do I answer questions? How do I feel comfortable in front of the camera? Because we all have days where we're going to feel yucky and not comfortable in front of a camera to begin with. But right. to get text, text messages and emails and phone calls from people saying, oh my gosh, it was so easy. MJ made me feel like I knew her friend. People were just blown away by your experience, your caring, your hospitality. Thank you. I can't say anything else. Thank you. Okay, Kelly. <laughs> um, I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and you better leave this in the interview. <laughs> Do not cut this. The What I loved about the interviewing is the sharing and getting to know everyone. That is for me coming from, you know, interviewing everyone, even with my own channel, with interviewing business own owners, is hearing, you know, where they were and what they went through, the struggles and how they bounced up, you know, how they dug in and mm -hmm. made something happen. And sometimes it was out of nothing, you know, a lot of times it was out of a struggle. So for me, being able to offer that opportunity for someone to share, you know, how they turned something around, how they flipped it, how they made it bounce up was such a joy. I mean, that was probably the best part of the project. Oh, that's amazing. And it's true because I've watched every single one of these interviews more than once. You know, it's very clear that this is a business book. This is a book for people to read because they are either thinking about starting a business, just starting out in a business, or they can be in business for 25 years. There are so many tips and so many, you know, tricks and things that people did to, to be successful, but every single person has a personal story attached to it. And I think that's what makes this so relatable and so readable. We're fighters and we're, we're winners and we just succeeded in 2020. Success, success when the chips were down. Yeah. Yeah. The, and what I loved about the book too, is you do have someone who started a nonprofit during the pandemic or a business or kept their business afloat 
or we have several women in the book that have bis have had businesses for 20 businesses or nonprofits for mm -hmm. 25 years. Yes. So there is such a mixture there and that wisdom that is being shared is wisdom that anybody can use. And as you said, what happens in our personal life impacts our professional life and what happens in our professional life impacts our personal life. So that book combines both the personal aspect and the professional aspect oh, for to sure. it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it's also a book for someone who just likes to read about people's lives. You know, let's be honest, yes. we all want to see what other people are doing and how they live and what they do for a living and what makes them happy, what makes them tick. So if, if it's something that people just want to pick up because they want to read about 21 different women, go for it. <laughs> well, that's what made the chicken soup for the soul books a national, yes. a global bestseller for years upon years. Because right. people do like to hear other people's stories. Yeah. And from a business perspective, <laughs> throwing this in there, we remember stories. We remember stories more than we ever do facts. Yeah, that's true. That is definitely true. And another thing too to think about is that everybody's contact information is at the end of their chapter. So if someone picks up the book and resonates with two or three of the women and wants to reach out to them, these women have given the okay for that. Whether it's an email, a Facebook page, their LinkedIn profile, Instagram, whatever it is, there is contact information for every single person in there. That someone who's maybe thinking about starting a similar business or somebody who's struggling in a similar business can reach out to that person and say, hey, I read your chapter and it really resonated with me. Can we chat for a bit? And every single person would say yes. Agree, agree. The also, I believe that certain chapters do have some freebies. They were given away, content, valued content. Yes, yes. Um, to, off the top of my head, it was yours, Renee's. Corey's, Jen Liker. Jen is a WordPress website designer and she does fabulous work. She has a freebie in hers. Yes. Yeah. And it's funny because when, when Corey and I sat down and did all the Amazon stuff, I said, you know, what, what am I going to charge for this book? Because I don't want it to be something that someone can't pick up because they maybe can't afford to purchase it. So that was part of the reason we did the free digital download on the 21st tomorrow. This way, anybody who wants the book can download it for absolutely free and, and have all these free resources. And then I thought, you know what? The book is called 21, W-O-N, launching on the 21st. We have 21 women. I'm going to charge $21. So that's Perfect. what the print, yeah, that's the print <laughs> copy, the paperback. But, um, you know, if, if you're watching this video and you know one of the authors or have a connection to one of the authors, you can reach out to them and purchase the book directly from them at a lesser price. That's another thing that we, you know, made sure that we did that was really important was that the authors were able to purchase the book and then resell them at a lesser price than what they're being sold for on Amazon. Because, and I can tell you this about every single person in the book, it wasn't about making money. It wasn't about putting the book out there to make a million dollars. It was putting the book out there to tell our stories, to get some notoriety for our businesses and to get our business name out there. But it was mostly to help other people. I mean, especially because we have several nonprofits in there and Susanna, who was featured yesterday or a few days ago, mm -hmm. she, uh, hers is a servant's heart. So that I believe, even though it's the name of her chapter, I believe every person in that book has that same heart. Oh, definitely. For sure. And I think, and it's funny because just knowing most of the women previously before doing this book, I've met them through volunteering or through nonprofit organizations. And if you look at their bios, maybe not the one they put in the book, but their bigger or longer bios for LinkedIn or whatever, everybody has volunteerism. Everybody spends time helping other people. And this was just a, a easy way to, you know, write 1,500 to 2,000 words in your chapter and help somebody. And a lot of the women, including you, yours was really intense, have a breakdown of tips. You know, this is what you should do. This is what you could do. I can't tell you how many people just did bulleted or numbered 
tips and we really didn't even ask for that. That wasn't really part of the outline. It was, you know, give some business tips, give some tips mm -hmm. as to what made you successful. Everybody ran with that because they, they truly want to help people. On that note, what would you, what is like a last word that you would say? If you have a dream, whether it is to start a business, whether it is to write a book, no matter what it is, you are never too old to do it, first of all. And I know Renee talks about that um, in one of the podcasts that we had did, she and I, that, you know, at 62, she's changing her career path and becoming a coach. And we have women from really all generations. We have some in their 20s and some in their 60s and everything in between. So I feel that no matter what your dream is and what you want to do, you'll know when the right time is. You know, it just so happened that my right time was during COVID after being laid off. That was my right time to mm -hmm. start my business and to look into, you know, authoring a chapter and organizing this book. But I feel that no matter what you want to do, you can do it, but you have to be willing to ask for help. And that's a big problem for a lot of women. If I didn't ask for help, where would the 20 other chapters come from? How would the book get edited? How would it get onto Amazon? How would I have had someone like you who was willing to spend all these hours on creating all these fabulous interviews? You cannot be afraid to ask for help. And you can do anything you set your mind out to. Absolutely. If you believe it, you can achieve it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much for sharing what you have learned over the past several months. Thank you for your generous offer. Remember viewers, Kelly has offered to help if you have any questions about writing a book or starting on a project like this. Until next time, this is MJ Calloway and remember to make it a bounce up day.